Okay. So well, we were uh, in a, I was in a group discussing um, a scenario of uh, uh, an area with high unemployment and social deprivation, uh, dropping out of education, and um, industrial decline in the area, kind of obviously exacerbating all of those. Um, and so we started with uh, trying to make a make a list of the underlying challenges or unmet needs, um, which is a really interesting exercise in itself. It generated this this page, um, which which led us to try and pull out a a kind of a a set of categories or divisions. And I think the one which we found most useful uh, was an internal-external division from the point of view of a young person living in that area. So, you know, what's going on um, in in, in terms of their own internal states, how they perceive themselves, um, their their mental health, if you will, in various various, uh, forms, and um, how does that affect or how... and, and, And how is that... Um, um, uh, shaped by the external environment, you know, from their family environment, their their peer group, uh, online and offline, um, the you know, the kind of political environment, the economic environment, uh, the, uh, the, the the specifics of, of that place, you know, the the, the culture that list you know, that, that exists there, the in, you know the industries that were there before they declined, what kind of um, what opportunities or challenges might might those kind of things present. And you know, the, the, f- trying to frame the uh, the you know the challenge of developing any digital approaches within that that interaction between a young person's internal states and how that determines their interactions with their environment and how the environment determines their internal states and we're kind of working around that cycle. Um, we went on um, to look at uh, so the key message cards which uh, had been generated prior to the event. Um, I found this a really, really uh, interesting, challenging exercise um, and really brought out a lot uh, from the group. Um, and I th- uh, this was really one of the really interesting points about, which actually came out of uh, not being willing to pick one particular message. Just saying actually undercutting all of this is, a, is a, a need to reflect upon what is the truth or reality for any practitioner and also the young people that they're working with. And how do we build that into the way in which projects are designed and developed. Um, Shut up and listen. Um, That's kind of leading on very much connected to um, looking beyond the obvious online. So, oh, well, Facebook and Twitter, that's online. That's what these young uns are doing now. Well, well, even within Facebook, there'll be different, very, very different experiences. And also there are a whole host of other ways in which young people are uh, interacting. Probably uh, BlackBerry Messenger might be a, a good... I know almost nothing about BlackBerry Messenger, so that's an interesting point for me. Um, and following on from, from these is another point about co-design. How do you do co-design well? Um, and then another point about using games and the issues falling out of this was a really interesting discussion. So how you can motivate uh, you know, it, intrinsically or, or extrinsically, what kind of values you're communicating in, in the way that you design games. Um, their attitude to failure and how whether um, actually games present a really interesting um, example of, of interacting with failure. You know, the, playing a, a, a traditional platform game, you have to try again and again and again, and you keep dying, but you keep trying to until you progress, which is not how people may uh, interact with failure in other um, instances. So, how can we read across, read that across? Um, and the uh, oh yeah, sorry. The skills that you that you develop in playing games in a determined way, you know, turning up, um, working together, collaborating, and um, how can we kind of, or, or the way in which you present yourself, your avatar, if you will. You know, there's there's a definite transferable area of skills, and can we make that more explicit? Can we find really good examples where that's worked really well? Uh, and the last message was talking about. Rather than starting online, then moving offline, trying to do both at the same time, it's all kind of of a piece. And there's an example of Nike Tag, which is a, a, a marketing um, uh, initiative from Nike, which uh, encourages you to connect with people in the real world with running or something. Um, Tim uh, came in and made an interesting point about scale, how that uh, operates in all these design principles, um, and how we can, you know, it's, it is scaling up something that we should have as a, as a kind of generic ambition. Um, I think, and here we've just got a few examples of organizations which the group felt um, brought out some of these points really well. So Liberty, 
working in very thoroughgoing co-design, co-management process with young people, which generates better products and services, which get used by more people. Uh, the MacArthur Foundation doing uh, social media research. Uh, creative partnerships as an example of um, a way of getting young people to explore play and failure in, in, a, in, a, in a hopefully uh, approachable way and thought-provoking, using games for the game trainers, using games for uh, leadership skills and, uh, yes, the cross-generational linking potential. So we're looking at a project uh, to connect the, the, the accumulated wisdom of the uh, 27,000 RSA fellows with young people and I'd be really interested to see what the role of on-offline mix there looks like.